Hi, in this video I will go over panel layout and their importance in comic books. In the simplest terms, panel layout guides the reader's eyes across the comic page. In Western comics, the USA, that's right to left, top to bottom. When planning out and designing your panels, you want to make sure that the angles and the position of your characters, your speech bubbles, and your comic book panels are designed in a way that it leads the reader's eyes across the page in an exciting and engaging way. In this video I'd like to give you some quick tips to improve your panel layout. I've imported some examples from Static Shock and Garfield to help illustrate the differences between panel design. In this example they use the dialog boxes 1, 2, and three, to move the reader's eyes across the page. And this empty space brings your eyes downward. As you can see, the second dialogue box is lower than the first, giving your eyes a downward trajectory. And as you can see, your eyes are bouncing around here. They curve around to this last panel, and then it continues to read, pushing it across, finally ending here at the end of the page. And as you can see right here, this hair sticking out of the panel, it pulls the reader's eye down towards the center of this figure. Not every panel needs to be angled or designed to move the reader's eyes across a page, but it definitely helps. Your eyes do need a chance to rest. Now in this next example, Garfield is a lot simpler design. As you can see, it's all going in one direction. There's no need to read downward, it's just going from left to right. As you can see, everything's just going left to right. It's super simple. Garfield uses very few design aspects to help guide the reader's eyes across the page. One thing it does use consistently is the angle of the face. Here, in Static Shock, right here, they use it once. A lot of it is empty space to help guide the eye. As you can see here in Garfield, he is facing right. In every panel, his head is facing right. Even when his body's left, his head is facing right. Now I'd like to go over different shapes and different framing techniques for the panels. You have basic squares and you have rectangles. Those are kind of the only shapes. You could definitely change it up with different shapes but I like to stick to the basics. And there's a lot of variety in them as well. You can change the angle of your boxes to help guide the reader's eyes. And here, this long box here may confuse you, but it's not really read in this direction. You'd still read left to right, top to bottom. When I am laying out my panels, I always want to think about the scene as a whole. What's the most important part? What are the beats? What's the pacing? All this comes into play when designing the panels. When the panels are similar size, you can imagine them having similar beats. When they're angled like this, they're sharp. You want to think of dynamic range and movement action. When sketching out your panel layout, you want to be very mindful of where you're going to place your text, your dialogue boxes, your sound effects, and everything like that. Here, I'm sketching out little boxes so I can have an understanding of how I want this page to flow. I want it to guide the reader's eye. In the beginning here, there may be a bit too many text boxes. So I go ahead and add a caption box here so that the reader's eyes just go straight across. So now it's time to put into practice. I thought we could use knock knock jokes because they have very simple setups and it differs depending on who tells it. Here we go, knock knock. <sighs> Who's there? Buddha. Buddha who? 
boot of this bread for me, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it's time to recreate it. It should be fairly simple. You wanna start off with your establishing shots. Establishing that there's two characters, the asker and the askee. Now the asker go ahead and says knock knock. Now these first two frames are relatively the same size because they're just establishing the characters. Uh, two individual characters. So there's nothing too special going on here. This third panel, I'm gonna make it really large. So I have both characters in the same panel. Okay, now they're sharing the emotional space of this frame and, and you can really tweak the emotions so that, I don't know, they're feeding off each other, if that makes sense. So here I'm having them respond, who's there? They have a very annoyed look on their face. And then the second character is gonna be extremely excited because they know the punchline of the joke ahead of time. One thing that I kept in mind when designing these panels was the punchline. Knowing that that's a very important part of telling this story, I decided to have it come in on the second page. This is a unique design element that you can use to help emphasize certain things in your story. Say that someone is getting stabbed in the back, or there's shady dealings done on the side, or just a surprise punch out of nowhere. All these can be punctualized and emphasized by a turn of the page because it's unexpected and a real surprise to the reader. And as I close out this page, I want to wrap up the setup to this joke. Now, as you can see, the asker is getting even more excited, getting ready for this punchline. And I hope you're ready for it too. So what I decided to do differently was more physical comedy than was in the clip. So I went with the classic pie in the face gag, but this time it's buttered bread. In hindsight, I do believe I could have been more exaggerated with the different poses of the characters, but this is just a rough example, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I really wanted to use this exercise to expand my brain and, and the way it thinks and really understand how I can use these panels to give a different feel, a different mood to these knock-knock jokes. Knock-knock jokes can have all types of genres from scary to funny to dark and sad. So I wanted to capture that with my panels. A tip to give a feeling of suspense is to have panels that grow increasingly more narrow as they go on, giving a sense of confined space uh, lack of room, lack of oxygen, just to give a feeling of claustrophobia. In this last panel, I am just showing the aftermath of the joke, the repercussions, the ass gee showing their face of disappointment as the bread slides off their face. I felt this last reactionary panel gave a good sense of closure. I've got plenty of more joke examples. Now for the setup, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Just going to be someone in their living room when they get this knock knock on the door. I'm going to have this first panel moderately sized to establish the living room scene where the character is just going to be relaxing, doing some mundane task. Then I want to add in this long panel here because I just imagine that's where the first knock knock is going to be. It's going to be of the door just being knocked on. Then I wanted to make it a bit more suspenseful, so I went ahead and staggered these last two panels and then gave them a bit of space to give a, I guess, an eerie, unsettling uh, feel to an awkward silence kind of a thing. Just that awkward spacing, if that makes sense. Now I'm going to start on the actual comic. So I started off with the doors, duplicated that, then I went in and established the character and the door in the same scene. and the mundane task of just flipping through channels. And then next, I wanna show the KGB in action. What are you doing? No more knock knock jokes. That's it. Ding dong. Who's there? KGB. Do 
back at the door. I'm not answering the answer door. Answer the ding door. Dong. No way, it's yeah, the KGB. Yeah, ding dong. I'm not answering that. Yes, you're going you to. Answer I'm it. not going to answer I'm not going to answer it. It's the KGB. <laughs> the KGB will vent for no one. <laughs> it's true. And that's the end of my video. I hope you like it. If you did, go ahead and give this video a like. Feel free to subscribe. And enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one.